Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Professor Dr. Avinash Dadich. I am the Dean of Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. Today, in our lecture 17, we will talk about very important aspect of our day to day life and our business life. Students, as you know, that now more or less we are spending almost 10 to 12 hours per day in online world. Either it is a personal life or professional life, things are happening in online world and in your business, just imagine like if you work in a company and life without a mobile and laptop or internet. So, it is very difficult to imagine that how life can take place personal or professional in offline world. So, when I say things are happening in online world, then it means there is some value and whenever there is a value, okay, value of anything, then crime will take place, yeah, it is very simple. So, how to define cyber law, cyber crimes, the entire IT ecosystem in India and this uh, chapter, this lecture we will talk about Information Technology Act 2000 and we will learn and we will try to understand practical aspects of cyber law. Okay? So, this will be useful for your business, uh, whether you work in a company or you work as an entrepreneur as well as in your personal life okay? with your family, with your individual uh, life. So, this lecture will be very valuable for you. So, IT Act 2000. Enacted on 17th May 2000, India is the 12th nation in the world to adopt cyber laws. So, you can see India adopted cyber law far back in 2000. I believe in 2000, uh, very few people in this country uh, were using internet, very, very few. That time, no one was using internet on mobile. Okay? People started using mobile. Uh, with internet maybe in 2003-04, but way back in two, uh, only 2000, India realized that now the IT revolution is going to take place and we need to create an ecosystem where people can work and use uh, internet and IT ecosystem for the maximum output. So, this law is based on the model on e-commerce adopted on a unicentral, the United Nations Commission on International Trade Law. So, during that time, the, 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 the approach at the global level that e-commerce is going to happen in a very large level. That time, maybe we never heard about this Flipkart and all these things, but you should not forget that eBay, Amazon and all these big platforms were active in European market and American market in after 90s. So, we have seen a historical evolution of the e-commerce market after 1990s and then in last uh, during that period almost 11 countries enacted few laws that when business is taking place online how to regulate it. We need to make some rules, regulations and ecosystem to manage e-commerce market. No doubt in 2000, there was no e-commerce market in India, maybe a little bit somewhere here and there, but I think it was a very visionary uh, decision of our uh, legislatures to enact a law which is based on the United Nations recommendation. So, this law was enacted with a view to give a fillip uh, to the growth of electronic based transactions. Because after 2000, if you see back in last 10, 15, 20 years, electronic transactions took place at very large level. 
you name any sector and you will realize that elect electronic transactions are taking place almost 70 to 80 percent. Okay. To provide legal recognition for e-commerce and e-transactions. So, in the absence of any law, all these e-commerce business transactions are uh, without having the legal validity or legal enforcement, legal support, it is very difficult for people to trust. You know, suppose you are going to write a check, for example, I give you one example. When you write a check, you sign a check, you trust it, you, you believe in that hard document. Okay? You believe in that hard document, now you are going to get your money. But just imagine if 500 years back or 300 years back, if someone asks you, okay, I will give you money and I am giving a piece of paper and I sign it, maybe you do not trust it. You say, oh, sorry, you give me coins, you give me money, you know, I do not trust these banks because banks were very new and during that time 300 years back, I do not trust any bank, I do not trust any document, you give me coins, gold coin, silver coin. But now in 20, um, maybe in 2000, people were very much uh, relaxed and confident with the hard money, the checks, cash. But if I ask them that why do not you use electronic transactions, like you transfer money from here to there without writing anything, it will happen automatically through the e-transaction. People were very, very uh, rigid, they said, Ki, what is the legal validity of this? What if I lose my money uh, during this transaction? If there is no law, if there is no ecosystem, then how can I trust it? So, to create the trust, we need to give legal recognition. Then to facilitate e-governance, you, you can see easily that in last 20 years, government of India, state governments, they created a huge e-governance system. So, e-governance system like for example, your Aadhaar, you have a number, you type your number and automatically your numbers are taken, your Aadhaar is linked. So many things are happening in online world and governance is very much connected electronically. Like for example, government is giving money directly to farmers and poor people into their account. There is no offline transaction, there is no document, it is purely online. Everything is linked, linked with each other. Aadhaar is linked with this document, that document is linked with passport, everything is linked. And this is called e-governance. So, to create an e-governance mechanism, a government enacted IT Act. To prevent computer-based crime and ensure security practices. As I said earlier, once the, there is some value, value of any transaction, value of any product or any service, then crime uh, starts taking place. You know. So, to prevent the crime, to define the crime, but what is crime? First, we need to define a crime that if you do this particular action, it will be crime. In offline world, since centuries we have defined crime, you do not need to explain what is theft, okay. you do not need to explain what is murder. But this online transaction, online things, e-governance, e-commerce, they are very new concept, very, very new concept. If you go back maybe 40 years back, you do not see any e-transaction, you do not see any e-governance, you do not see any anything happening in the, on the internet. So, these are very new concepts, very, very new concepts. And as you know that criminals are like unfortunately, notoriously, they are very innovative in nature. They always try to invent new types of crime. Okay? So, until and unless we create a law which can define the actions which are criminal in nature, okay? until and unless law does not declare, like suppose if the law says that uh, this is this action is crime, then only it is crime. It is not up to you and me which will define, the law has to define. Okay? So, the, the cyber based crime, computer based crime and then ensure security practices, how to secure secure the e in internet, how to secure the electronic transactions. So, that is why we created this law and legal recognition of electronic documents and digital signature, that is very important. Like there are so many documents now, they are digital. Like for example, your email, email is an electronic document, you write an email, can we give a legal validity to your email, 
your WhatsApp, your SMS, all these things, you know, they are electronic. So many documents like you create, you fill a form, then a PDF is generated. Can I give legal validity to that document without any signature of that particular officer? Or there are some digital signatures. Okay? So, how to make digital signatures, how to define digital signatures and how to protect digital signatures. So, all these complicated things were discussed in uh, IT Act 2000. Objectives to provide legal recognition of transactions carried out by means of electronic data interchange and other means of electronic communication, commodity referred to as a electronic commerce, okay, electronic business to facilitate electronic filing of documents with the government agencies and e-payments. The act also provides for the constitution of the cyber regulation advisory committee which shall advise the government as regards any rules or for any other purpose connected with, with this particular act. So, the objective of the act that how to define transactions, how to define agencies, organizations, because when you are introducing a new concept in market, you know, in the entire economy, you need to create lot of institutions also. Okay? So, the act created lot of institutions. It also aimed to amend the Indian Penal Code, Indian Evidence Act, the Bankers Books Evidence Act and Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. Because all these laws, as I mentioned four and many more, many more they were created in offline world, they were created for the offline world, they never imagined that one day online transactions will take place, you know. So, we need to change them and how can you change them when, when you have a strong IT law, okay, because all those changes must be in the alignment of that main IT law, okay. So, we created IT Act and then we made lot of changes in the existing uh, rules and regulations, for example, IPC, Evidence Act and all these things. And it also helpful to promote business with the help of internet. We wanted to promote internet and if you do not have a law and if people can see that so many crimes are taking place, then why people will use internet? You remember uh, like 10 years back, lot of old people and still they are. Uh, they are very hesitating, you know, to use the internet, electronic transactions, they never trusted. So, if you have strong legal institutions, law, enforcement, then people will use internet. Now, you see people are using internet just like anything, people are doing economic transactions like Google, Paytm, people are using it even for 10 rupees, okay. So, this is the level of trust because of the IT Act. They know that if something goes wrong with my mobile or with my computer, if someone does any crime with me in online world, I can go to the police station and file a case. Okay. It is also to provide for the legal framework to the legal uh, 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 sanity is accorded to all electronic records and their activities carried out by electronic means. It also sets up rules and regulation which apply on any electronic business transaction. It also created lot of rules, regulations, safeguarding the interest of internet users. So, advantage of uh, IT Act 2000, helpful to promote e-commerce, enhance the corporate business through ICT. So, because of IT Act, now you can see almost all companies in India, they are using internet for their business. Okay because of the IT Act. High penalty for cyber crime, even the criminal penalties are also there. Filing online forms, now you are almost like filing so many online forms, you do not need to go to any uh, government agency and uh, put yourself in a very long queue, uh, you just fill the form online. Secure in transactions, record authentication, that is very important, you know, whatever you are doing in online world, it is just like offline world even sometime more secure than offline world, because it is very difficult to lie before a technology. Like for example, if I say, see obviously there is a possibility, hacking is possible, but in normal life, in normal people, they cannot manipulate with technology. Like for example, if I want to trace your location in a crime, that if I can trace your mobile location, if the mobile is with you and if I can record your voice, 
it's easy to understand and fix your location until and unless you are super expert in manipulations and uh, internet you cannot manipulate with your location so it's very important evidence in uh, in in uh, um, criminal law to create new types of evidences okay site legitimacy that's an and e record keeping highlights of the it act 2000 electronic contracts will be legally valid so earlier only our uh, offline contracts were valid like for example when you buy something online yeah you are making a contract you take something terms and conditions so that's a contract okay you don't need to go to some offline shop and sign the agreement no electronic contracts are as legally just like offline contracts all online transactions just like offline transactions are legally valid there is no difference between now online and offline legal recognition of digital signatures security procedure for electronic records and digital signature appointment of certifying authorities and controller so obviously it's not like that anybody can use digital signature they have to take permission from these certifying authorities and controllers under the IT Act and controller to act as a, a repository of all digital certificates. So, nobody can manipulate with your digital certificates, they have created a system. Certifying authorities to get license to issue digital certificates, various types of computer crimes defined and stringent penalties provided under this Act. Okay. Extent of application, this Act applies to whole of India and also applies to any offence or contravention there under committed outside India by any person. So, this act apply to outside of India also by any person irrespective of his nationality. If such act involves a computer, computer system or network located in India. So, suppose you are sitting outside of India, you commit a crime like a cyber crime and you believe that nothing will happen to me, no. Then Indian government can file FIR against you and through the Interpol and through the international law, they can start proceeding against you. The only condition is that that person activity should affect someone in India who is using computer or network in India. Okay? So, the nationality or territorial jurisdiction is not very important in cyber law. As you know, it is very simple, you know, when you are doing cyber crime, uh, national boundaries, um, boundaries are not that important anymore, you know. So, you need to understand that cyber world does not recognize any national, regional boundaries, okay. So, the Indian law applies to everyone if they are doing something wrong against India. A structure of the IT Act consists of 13 chapters and 90 sections. So, these are the main features. The Act provides legal recognition to e-commerce which facilitate commerce in e-transaction. It recognizes records kept in electronic forms like any other documentary record. So, if you keep any electronic record or any electronic document that is valid as per this law. Act also provides the digital signature. Cyber Law Appellate Tribunal has been set up to hear appeal against appellate um, authorities and the act applies to any cyber offence or contravention committed outside India. Okay. SEBI has announced that the trading of securities on the internet will be valid amendment 2008. So, now even people are doing trading uh, online world because the SEBI, the regulatory body in uh, market, they have amended their law. The Indian Penal Code 8060 was found insufficient to cater the needs of new crime emerging from the internet expansion. Even some of the traditional crimes such as conspiracy, solicitation, securities, fraud are now being committed through internet, which necessitates a new law to curb them. In, it was in this background that this law was enacted. So, types of cyber crime, we will see these types of cyber crime in different ways. So, so like cyber crime, you can say hacking, information theft, email bombing, uh, salami attacks, then web jackling, denial of service attacks and trojan attacks. So, these are the 
some basic one there are many more many but these are the common one possible cyber crime the computer as a target so who like how they can target so the first thing a computer a computer can be a target using a computer to attack another computer hacking virus worm, virus attack dos attack so they can attack on your computer when i say computer means desktop laptop even your mobile because your mobile is also acting like a computer now the computer as a weapon okay using computer to commit real world crimes like cyber terrorism ipr violation cc funds eft fraud pornography so these are the real crime which are taking place in offline world you understand so there are two types of crime one that crimes are happening through the computer to the computer okay there is no offline element here there are offline elements also okay so cyber terrorism that's like basically it's affecting the offline world also unauthorized access and hacking any kind of access without the permission of either the rightful owner or the person in charge of a computer okay every act committed towards breaking into computer and the network is hacking hacking is just like a theft okay so if you enter into someone's computer or if someone is the in charge of that computer maybe not the owner but the in charge of the computer if you enter into that computer if you do something with that con computer without the consent okay if you access that computer without the approval of the owner or the in charge that is called hacking okay trojan attacks i'm just trying to explain there are very few very simple words but you need to understand trojan attacks the program that act like something useful but do the things that are quite dampening the program is described as trojans you know so it's like virus some type of virus but it's more aggressive virus and worm attacks a program that capabilities to infect other programs and make copies of itself and spread into program is called virus programs that multiply like virus but spread from computer to computer are called as worms okay email related crimes email spamming bombing fraud sending threatening emails defamatory emails sending malicious code through emails so these are the things which people can do through emails so they can uh, do the trojan attack they can do virus attack they can do worm attack they can do email attack denial of service attacks uh, flooding a computer resource with more requests than it can handle this cause the resource to crash thereby denying access to service to authorized users attempt to flood a network thereby preventing legitimate network traffic attempt to disrupt connection between two machines thereby preventing access to a machine so sometime it's a virus sometime you create a system where the computer or the network is so flooded with information that now it cannot work so you want to stop it you want to uh, deny the access so again if i make it more larger then you can see that there are crime against government crime against persons and crime against property there we can divide cyber crimes into three parts so like when i say crime against government then cyber terrorism cyber pornography uh, defamation cyber stalking sale of illegal articles like narcotics weapons wildlife so all these things are basically crime against government online gambling is again crime against government see in the first six crimes you can see the individuals are not targeted but the government the state okay they are under attack okay not the individuals obviously ultimately when the state or the government or the uh, country is under attack by the cyber cri criminals then the ultimate losers or sufferers are normal citizens but they are attacking directly on government rather than individuals okay then crime against persons like the individuals like the intellectual property crimes software piracy copyright infringement trademark okay people can steal your intellectual property through cyber attacks okay and then email uh, spooking you know so these are the crimes against people that crime against property like forgery phishing credit card frauds so these when i say credit card frauds means that i am entering into your property like your credit card is your property and i am copying it and through the cyber crime i am misusing it so 
So, you just see cyber crime provisions under IT Act 2000. So, offenses and re re relevant section under IT Act. Tampering with computer source, de uh, source documents section 65. Hacking with computer system, data alteration section 66. Publishing obscene information section 67. Unauthorized access to protected system section 70. Breach of confidentiality and privacy section 72 and publishing false digital signature certificate section 73 and there are more and more. I am just giving you this example just to make you understand that in the way people are committing crime in offline world, they can do the same type of crime in online world also. So, now you if you do not understand cyber system, cyber laws or the ecosystem, you are a easy victim. So, then computer related crimes under IPC and special laws. See the previous slide was these sections are in IT Act uh, resulting into a criminal liability. These sections are in IPC and special laws like sending threatening message by email section 503, okay. sending defamatory message by email section 499 and 500 IPC, forgery of electronic records section 463, 470 and 471 of IPC, bogus website, cyber fraud section 420 IPC, email spooking section 1416, 417, 463 of IPC, online sale of drugs NDPC Act, so the way you are selling drugs in offline world, you can sell drugs in online world also. So, the narcotics uh, law will apply on you, web and uh, jacking section 383 of IPC and online sales of arms, arms act. Okay. So, you can easily see when you do something wrong like sometime you know by mistake you make a mistake, uh, do a cyber crime. So, like I give you one example recently in one city I do not want to name uh, maybe the Agra you can say. So, in Agra there was one interesting uh, very bad incident happened that uh, one lady teacher she started getting lot of uh, wrong calls, you know, because someone posted that lady is working as a prostitute and so people were calling her, you know, and make uh, asking wrong questions, very objectionable questions and she changed her number. And after a few days again calls started coming on new number. So, she was very pissed off, I think one has to be because this is absolutely against a woman's dignity. So, she went to a police station, cyber police station and then they started investigation and through the investigation they found that one of her student only, very young student, maybe 16, 17 year old, that the student was taking coaching you know, like a tuition under that teacher and when the police caught him and they asked why you did it, he said yeah I am just you know, I am just it, it was a fun act you know, there was nothing serious for me. I thought just to you know create some fun in life, so I did it. So, now you see the young guy without understanding the legal obligations and the legal consequences when he did this crime. Okay. So, no doubt now he is in jail obviously, uh, he will face a criminal litigation here, but just try to understand the uh, impact of that small funny act on that woman's life. So, what I am trying to say that cyber crimes uh, as you can see in IT Act and IPC and special laws, they are well defined. Okay. So, if you do not understand the uh, legal obligations of your cyber life or cyber actions, you can be in a problem. Like for example, suppose if you create a fake Facebook ID, you know of your friend just for fun or for some other purpose that is a cyber crime, you can go to jail up to 3 years, you know. I do not want to give you like complete laundry of cyber crimes because you need to understand first that the way you are responsible in offline world, you know, in offline world whenever you like in offline world you will never go and say okay I am Amitabh Bachchan, you know, you, you won't say this because you know that you are doing something wrong, you know. If you say uh, that I am X person and if you start doing something wrong, you know that you are doing a crime. Okay. 
but in online world because no one is watching you and you always believe that uh, nobody can touch me but that's a problem see the beauty of the cyber uh, system that nothing is impossible people can trace you even if you are very smart person you do so many things but there is a mechanism there is a system people can trace back to you and come to you and say okay, you did this crime and there is another issue in cyber world that you can't remove evidences okay in offline words maybe sometime it's possible that if you have a paper you just burn the paper you destroy the ashes you know and then it's almost like impossible to uh, get that paper from ashes you know if the, the ashes are in water and I think it's like almost impossible to know what was written in that paper. But in cyber world nothing is permanently deleted even if you delete complete delete you, you do so many process but somewhere that document is lying and through forensic, in, uh, forensic uh, investigation the police officers and cyber experts can always get that document or video or any information. So, the beauty of cyber investigation is that nothing is permanently deleted, okay? nothing is permanently hidden. So, you know you need to be very careful when you are using uh, your cyber world to do something okay? and you need to understand that maybe you do not know it is illegal, see it is an unintentional crime like you know you create a fake ID you say it is just a fun you know I am just making fun of that guy. No, this is a serious criminal offense. So, whenever you do something please uh, ask a lawyer or you read some cyber law books or maybe an online that whether it is a criminal action or not. Then there are some civil wrongs also earlier I was talking about criminal now I will talk about civil wrongs. So, chapter 9 of the act section 43 whosoever without permission of the owner of the computer source access to a network downloads copies extract any data introduce or cause to be introduced any virus damage or cause to be damaged any computer source destroy alter delete add modif modify or rearrange change the format of the file disrupt or cause disruption of any computer resource preventing normal continuous of the computer. So, these things will bring civil liability also civil liability means uh, penalties money okay? and you need to understand civil and criminal liabilities they can work all together it is not necessary that if you are facing civil case you cannot face criminal it they can go both together. Data are diddling changing data prior or during input into a computer section 66 and 43 d of the it act cover the offense of data diddling penalty exceeding rupees 1 crore rupees so ndmc electricity bill a private contractor who was to deal with receipts and accounting of electricity bill by the ndmc collection of money computerized accounting record maintenance and remittance in his bank who misappropriated huge amount of funds by manipulating data files to show less receipts and bank remittance. So, here he, he manipulated with the data as I said in offline world if you manipulate the data still there is a possibility that maybe once in a million you can you can save yourself, but in online world there is no possibility. Okay. So, amendment in the act 2000, uh, this act was amended in 2008 and the bill effective from 5th of February 2009. The rules frame under the amended act become in effect effective from 27th October 2009, new section in the amended act 2008. Freedom of, exp so what was the changes made? Freedom of expression laws to be made intermediary liabilities to be relaxed, new rules of privacy and surveillance were introduced, new changes with respect to data encryption and consolidated list of penal provisions. So, all these things were enacted in 2008. So, now let us see the impact of 
IT Act 2000 and 2008, the rules 2008. Penalty and compensation for the damage to the computer system and other related devices. Not See, as I told you, you go to jail, but at the same time, you have to pay compensation also. If you are damaging, if you are creating some problem for some people, maybe you have to pay damages also. Now, email is valid and legal form of communication in our country which can be duly produced and approved in a court of law. You do not need to worry about if someone is writing an email, that email is a valid legal communication. Electronic communication, electronic commerce using the legal infrastructure provided by the act, companies digital signatures to carry out their transactions online were allowed. The act also enables the companies to file any form, application or any other documents electronically for interaction. Okay. The IT Act enables companies legally to retain the said information in the electronic form which further can be used at any place. So, it gave lot of uh, relaxation to companies that now you do not need to do lot of offline filing, offline uh, data recording you know you can uh, ask your employees to file lot of online forms you can store that data in online mode. So, I think that was a great relief for companies. Electronic evidence uh, information given and received has an electronic time stamp, okay. that is very important. Now, as per this law, there is a time stamp that we will exactly know when it happened and the law will respect that time. Secure access to computer or web resources, no identity theft, privacy, hacking, cyber frauds are allowed, downloaded copies are valid and legally accepted. Okay. No computer can have virus over internet which can infect another computer. Okay. Denial of service is not allowed, it elaborates on offenses, penalties and breaches. No obscene or socially unwanted or re, uh, revealing any human physical image are not allowed and it is offense. You cannot put these type of photos, videos on social media and any other media. Case studies, let us see some case studies. Bazi.com case, okay. CEO of Bazi.com was arrested because, because a CD with objectionable material was being sold on the website. The CD was also being sold in the market in Delhi. So, you see when you are working in a company, even some of your employees did something wrong ultimately the senior person can be responsible also like individuals will be responsible, but the seniors will also be responsible for any illegal activity carried out by any employee or by the company. Uh, Pune city bank uh, call center fraud under section 43 some ex employees of BPO arms of emphasis limited M source made a fraud against US customers of city bank to the tune of rupees 1.5 CR. It was one of those cyber crime that raised concern of many kinds including the role of data protection. The crime was obviously committed using unauthorized access to the electronic account space of the customer. It is therefore formally within the domain of cyber crime. So, even uh, people use the data legitimate data, but without the access and if they commit a crime then that will be considered as a cyber crime. Cyber attack on Cosmos Bank, the Pune branch of Cosmos Bank was drained of rupees 94 crore is an extremely bold cyber attack. By hacking into the main server, the thieves were able to transfer the money to a bank in Hong Kong. Along with this, the hackers made their way into the ATM server to gain details of various visa and rupee debit card. So, this is a, like a classical case of cyber hacking in the financial sector. The switching system link between the centralized system and the payment gateway was attacked meaning neither the bank nor the account holders got wind of the money being transferred. According to the cyber crime case study internationally a total of 14,000 transactions were carried out spanning our across 28 countries using 450 cards. Nationally, 2800 transactions using 400 cards were carried out. So, this is the like a large uh, introduction or large, large illustration of the cyber crime. Okay. 
that when even the banks are not safe, even the you know most of the uh, websites of the government, even the NASA in USA sometimes they hack NASA website also. So, nothing is safe, you need to understand, you need to run your life, your business, your personal life that nothing is safe anymore. If you know how to protect your IT uh, ecosystem, you can mitigate your risk, you know. You know that if something is happening wrong, how to stop it, how to mitigate it, how to file a criminal case against it, okay. Tampering with computer source document. In a case of manipulation, the Tata Indicom employees were taken into custody in relation to the tampering of the electronic 32 bit number that is programmed into cell phones. The theft was for the Reliance Intercom. In a verdict on a letter date, the court said that since the source code was manipulated, it calls the use of section 65 under the Information Technology Act, okay. Bob Hawks mail. So, if you write an email and saying that a 15 year old boy from Bangalore, the cyber crime investigation cell arrested him in 2009. The boy was accused of sending an email to a private news company saying that I have planted 5 bombs in Mumbai, you have 2 hours to find them. So, this is like a funny thing maybe for a kid, but then the concerned authorities were contracted immediately in relation to the cyber case in India and who traced the IP address to Bangalore. So, you understand through the IP address protocol, you know internet protocol, they can easily reach out to you. Now, maybe you have seen in many movies that they, they keep changing their IP addresses. There are few ways, but guys please try to remember, there are always ways you know to ignore or to avoid the risk, but are you sure that there is final? It is very difficult, okay. Because even if you know some technology, there is a possibility that the cyber experts or cyber police, they also know that technology and they know maybe the advanced technology. So, it is very difficult to understand a certain that whether you are going to uh, you know go without any criminal penalty. Cyber terrorism, that is very new types of uh, terrorism. Since the changes were made out in the IT Act in Mumbai, these cases of cyber terrorism was its first project. A threat email had been delivered to BSE and NSE at 10.40 am on Monday. While the MRA Mark Police Station and Cyber Crime Investigation Cell working together on the cyber crime case, the accused has been detained. The IP address has been traced to Patna, Bihar. When checked for any personal details, two contact numbers were found, which belong to the photo frame maker in Patna. So you can see very, very small mistake, small error can identify you. Sometimes people think, oh, okay, I am sitting in Patna, I am writing a mail in uh, Mumbai, how they will come to know me. See, in offline world, as I said, distance, boundaries, they have some value, but in online world, they have no value. So, you need to be very, very careful. Sexual crimes, punishment for publishing or transmitting of material uh, depositing children in sexually explicit act in electronic form of relevant like the section 67b. So, in this case the public interest litigation was filed Janhit Manch versus and others and Union of India. The petition sought a blanket ban on pornographic websites. The NGO had argued that websites displaying sexual explicit content that has an adverse influence leading youth on see the point is even in this judgment, the Supreme Court asked maybe more than 300 sites, say uh, pornographic sites to shut it down. But as I, as I said earlier, these law boundaries, they are not very, uh, you know, effective because those guys started their website again with different names. So, it is very difficult, but you need to appreciate that this is the beginning of cyber police, cyber crime, cyber law and with the time everybody will evolve everybody will evolve and the by use of uh, artificial intelligence, you know, you know the AI now, maybe the integration of cyber law, cyber security and artificial intelligence can bring better outcome that these type of uh, websites, uh, this type of cyber terrorism or any cyber crime can be detected automatically by using artificial intelligence. So, maybe that can be the future of cyber crimes.
The next question is, is IT act incomplete? Okay. New forms of cyber crimes are happening. So, we have already defined few crimes, but what if few new types of crimes are taking place? Like for example, now in the Bitcoin, if I say the blockchain technology, uh, the IT act is not covering anything relating to blockchain technology. So, if any crime happens by using the blockchain technology, because blockchain technology gives the benefit of uh, anonymity that nobody will come to know that who was behind this particular action. That is the one of the foundation of uh, blockchain technology, the anonymity, you know. And in the cyber world, until and unless you can see the identity of that person, then it is very difficult to ascertain the criminal liability. But in this case, it is difficult. So, new forms of cyber crimes are happening. So, maybe we need to change our law a little bit to understand the emerging trends in the cyber crime. Like the internet banking, e-funds transfer and e-payment laws, maybe we need to change little bit because new forms of internet banking is emerging. It is not a very traditional e-banking. Now, lot of fintech companies are taking place. They are very, very different from traditional banks. So, how to regulate fintech companies in cyber world that can be the one issue. Cyber taxation issue that is again very emerging that how to put taxes on Google, Facebook, Amazon because they are making billions, but uh, how to put tax on them. So, jurisdictional issue, uh, a PE issues whether a website a PE, uh, problem of jurisdiction and extraterritorial jurisdictions and then for a privacy issues. So, when I say cyber taxation, you need to understand that IT companies like for example, Google. Google is listed in Ireland. In Ireland, there are very, very uh, less uh, corporate taxes. Okay. So, a lot of IT companies are listed uh, as a headquarter in those countries where taxes are very low and they are making huge profit in other countries and then they are transferring those profits in those countries and this is how they are making billions and billions. So, now in lot of countries like in France recently, they have introduced a e-tax. Okay. So, those companies they have to pay some taxes in local country. In India also right now we are talking about that how to introduce e-tax for the internet companies. So, this can be covered under IT Act, obviously it is a part of tax law, but in IT Act also we need to make some provisions that how to identify those companies, how to put how to put them in a bracket where uh, the government can take taxes. Positive initiatives and recommendations. So, like for example, cyber Mumbai Cyber Lab is a joint initiative of Mumbai Police and NASCOM has been set up. So, I, why I am giving this example, a private organization and police, they are collaborating, they are setting more and more cyber labs. So, in Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, all in big cities, you will find that the private and the police, they are all working together because private people, private companies, they have more advanced technology, more resources. So, they can help enforcement agencies like the police and other agencies. So, we need more labs like this. We need more induce, uh, private investment in cyber crime detention. Suggested amend, amendment to IT Act, new provisions for child pornography. So, child pornography is a very, very serious issue and we cannot uh, ignore the fact that there is no special provision for child pornography. So, maybe we need to bring some new changes in the law in terms of child pornography. Stricter provisions for online offenses required as compared to offline mode since quantitative impact of, of online offense is much more than offline offenses and punishment needs to be uh, you know make a balance to negative impact suffered by the victim. See when you do something online the cost is very less. Okay? Suppose if you do a bank robbery then you need to go there with so many people, rifles, weapons, you need to control people, you know it is too risky. And maybe you will affect very few banks and uh, very few people or maybe that particular bank. Okay? Maybe you can take maybe 5 crore, 10 crore rupees from one bank. So, the impact is minimum, limited. 
But when you do a cyber crime, like in this uh, previous case when we examined that thousands of thousands credit cards, debit cards and 1400 transactions took place globally. So, someone sitting in his office or in room committed that crime. Okay. So, can we have the same rules, same concepts for the offline and online crimes? Can we say that the same type of punishment will be given to offline and online crimes? No, because in online crime, the impacts are much larger, much larger. Victims are suffering, the number of victims is much bigger. In that scenario, we need to define new rules, new policies to compensate the victims. Okay. And more public awareness campaign, we really like now we, we can see in last few years, two years, three years, some campaigns are there, but still more or less if you see the grassroots realities in our country, very few people are aware of cyber law and cyber crimes. As I said that Agra issue, that uh, young kid, he was never aware of this thing that what he is doing may be a funny act, but this act is going to take him into jail. Okay. So, sometime cyber awareness campaigns, I say that there are two aspects. One, if you create awareness, then many people might not do that crime, because in the absence of knowledge, they do some crime. They believe that this is funny act, this is harmless act, this is just like fun and they commit a crime. Okay, they do that action which is amounted as a crime. Okay. But if they know the law, if they know the legal provision, then maybe they will not do it. So, that is the first part, the beauty of the campaign. Second, lot of people are suffering right now because of cyber crime, but they really do not know whether that particular action is a crime. Like for example, cyber bullying, you know lot of people are suffering due to cyber bullying, but they the sufferer, the victim maybe does not know about that it is a cyber crime. So, he or she should maybe take it like a normal thing that okay, that person is doing the cyber bullying, harassment, but I really do not know where to go, how to go and uh, so ignorance of law sometime uh, put these victims into a very difficult situation. So, if we can educate them, if we can tell them that listen cyber bullying is a crime under this section, you can go to the police station and they will take action. So, we can stop crimes also. Training of police officers of effectively combat cyber crime, this is very, very important in a public private partnership, public sector banks, uh, Karnataka police department and NASCOM have jointly set up the lab like for example, another example which will train 1000 officials every year. The trained officers will be able to analyze and scrutinize data on hard disk, track emails, extract evidence using internet and mobile phones and cyber crime related legislature. So, this is very important that see even if the victim goes to a police station and saying that okay, under this section please take action. What if the concerned police officer is not trained? He does not understand that what type of action is required under the cyber law. Because when I say that cyber law, uh, the, if the officer is not trained, I give you a very funny example uh, in the starting of maybe like 2002, 2003, one of my friend was telling me that uh, there was an uh, FIR against some people in it, and the Delhi police, some junior officers, very junior officers without any proper training. Uh, they went to uh, you know arrest that person and they say okay now we need to collect evidence also you know so they said okay take the screen like the uh, you know the desktop screen not the uh, the machine which is carrying the uh, entire data okay cpu they took the monitor like a, they thought that everything is in the monitor and they took the monitor with them as an evidence and when someone told them as a cyber expert that in this monitor there is nothing, everything is in another machine. It is a very simple and funny example, but it is the reality. Still very few police officers are trained how to get evidence, how to preserve the 
you know the validity of evidence because in uh, electronic evidence like as I say hard disk, emails and everything you have to be expert in uh, cyber crime. Then more cyber crime police cells set up and they are required effective e-surveillance is very much required website aid is creating awareness and increasing reporting of cyber crime cases. So, now there are government of India website, state government websites, uh, national women's crime, uh, women commission website. So, they have given special numbers and links where you can report your cyber crimes and active coordination between police and other law enforcement agencies and authorities is very much required. They are all working in different manner, they need to work together. NASCOM in association with the Chandigarh administration inaugurated a state of art regional cyber security and research at Chandigarh. So, these type of initiatives are very much required in every district level there has to be a cyber crime research center where the local police can go and do the cyber investigation. So, with these words I will stop here, but what I am trying to say that cyber crime is everywhere maybe you are the victim, sometime you are the accused. So, please be careful because sometime unintentionally, unknowingly you commit, you do something in cyber world uh, and you really do not know it is a crime. Okay? So, you need to be careful. Okay? Second, uh, some crime is happening against you and you really do not know that this is a crime. Okay? So, in both situation, if you know the law, the cyber law, IT Act, IPC and the relevant provisions, you can save yourself by not committing a crime and you can save yourself by filing a police complaint against the accused which is uh, doing something wrong against you, okay, your family or relative or your community. So, the awareness of cyber crime will help you in your personal life as well as in your professional life. Thank you very much.